So we're here at Mobile World Congress 2022. I'm with the Radisys CEO. Aaron, great to see you. Absolutely, mm -hmm. same here. Been a long time since people have been meeting and, 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 and hanging out together. Tell us a bit about what Redisys has been you know, doing over that period. What have, you, what have you prepared for the show here and the absolutely, announcements? Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, like you said, it's just so great to be back amongst people and uh, great to be at the show. It's been a couple of years. And uh, we have been doing a lot of different things, but I want to summarize it using three themes. The first one is disaggregation, and we'll talk about it across our portfolio. Second one is about broadband everywhere. And the third one is about advanced monetization. So these are the three areas that we have been working on. So if I talk about disaggregation first, um, what we are showing here and we are announcing as well is a number of proof points as to how we have disaggregated access technologies, both fixed broadband and mobile broadband. And what we mean by disaggregation is that we become software centric in one sense and we are able to run our software across multiple hardware platforms. And in some cases, we're able to package our software and hardware together and then work across open interfaces. So we've got multiple proof points on disaggregation on both fixed broadband and mobile broadband. When it comes to convergence, one of the superb opportunities with 5G, and this is unique to Radisys, is because we operate in both fixed and mobile broadband, is the ability to bring both of them together to provide coverage. So for example, one of the proof points that we have is how we can hang a small cell off of a broadband access network, off of an FTTX network, mm -hmm. and things start to converge them. So you can have optical transport based on FTTX, same network carrying consumer traffic, business traffic, and now also wireless backhaul traffic. And then you hang a 5G access point at the end of that. Now all this matters only if you can monetize and make some money out of that. And we've got a number of use cases where we address that as well. So those are the three things. Mm -hmm. It's about disaggregation, it's about broadband everywhere, and it's about advanced monetization. Good stuff, that's a tight message for sure. Uh, let's go with the uh, disaggregation part first. I mean, that's something Redis has been working on you know, a long time, really, it's fair to say. Um, how do you think that's kind of impacted your, your customers and their customers? Because it's, it's one thing to do it at a software and, and hardware level, but you have to put it into operations and things as well. I think what is happening with customers is now they are starting to understand what it takes to work in this disaggregated world. It also means that they have to understand how to deal with micro supply chains at different components of the network. And while they have to work with somebody who can integrate and provide this experience, they also have to understand how to go sourcing at different levels and how to work with the life cycle of different components. So for example, the hardware life cycle, now they start to understand that it is not about A6, it is also about the family of processors that go in on which you're running your software. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have a one-stop solution for everything. So for a small capacity solution, I can go in with a low-end processor. And the same software can scale up and work on a high capacity server as well. And that could be up to 40 processors for you know, a different kind of application. So they are starting to understand the nuances a little bit more as to what kind of packaging they want. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. And then on the um, convergence, I remember we did an, I did an interview with you two years, more than two years ago, MWC in America, Americas. Yes. You actually raised the convergence point there as well around um, wireline, wireless convergence, I guess. That's a long running theme in industry. Never, you know, it's always been a bit like next year or we'll do that soon. Where are you at with your, your own product development and then feeding that into customers? Yeah, so our own product development is at two levels. One is on the software side where, as you know, for example, the broadband forum has defined a way to bring things together using the AGF functionality, et cetera, and we are very much involved in that, developing the software for that. And while that is okay, you got to realize it practically in a network. And we are at the point now where our software is mature, where we are going into labs, where we can actually demonstrate this for customers to try it out. A second level is actually when you can put it together as a solution. So for example, you need a practical proof one, and that is what we have here where we've got a, either a GPON or an XGSPON network, depending on what the network, what the mm -hmm. operator is deploying, and you can actually have a 5G small cell hanging off of the end of that, just connected through an ONT. And the backhaul network is good enough now where you can actually run this in a reliable manner. Later in the year, we expect that some of our operator customers will actually roll out this configuration for uh, 5G small cell coverage. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the converge is a huge theme for, for many telcos, both on their own operations, but also the service they put out to customers. Um, 
On the last point, then you mentioned monetization. I think of that, I guess, in terms of what's good for a customer. What do yeah. we like as a as a as a as a buyer here? Yeah. Um, you know, you're you're a I guess broadly a software company. How do you actually have any influence on on customer and value and monetization? Yeah. So one of the things that we have that we have not talked about enough is our footprint with our media server. Our media server is completely disaggregated and is running in 200 operator networks. And now you think about it, if you're in the media plane, and today everything is about media, I mean, mm -hmm. even our interaction is about video, right? So we are in that plane across 200 operator networks. What could we do more with it, right? So that is how we started to think about it. And we've launched at the show uh, our Engage Digital Platform which brings in programmability into all kinds of communication services. Mm -hmm. So with a no-code platform, you can actually create advanced services and we've got a number of demos on how we show that. So this brings monetization beyond just voice and video interaction into a B2B context, for example, and multimodal communication. So that is one aspect of it. The second aspect that we're working on, which is on the other side of the show floor, is what happens after you've deployed a broadband network? So in some societies in the world, uh, home automation, home security, is still a market that is opening up. Mm -hmm. And we've got a smart home solution that can be packaged along with any kind of broadband access. And we've got a complete operator dashboard, a consumer dashboard, a family of uh, smart home devices, et cetera. And, and that package takes us into a new realm of monetization as well. Aaron, that's great. Um, thanks very much. Absolutely. Great overview of Rate Assist and, um, you know, my first proper meeting of MWC. Thanks very much. Very good, thank you very much. Enjoy the show and great to be here. Cheers.